Uh, my name is Andrew Schaefer, and I'm currently the E. Hugh Lucky uh, Distinguished Professor um, and Chairman of the Department of Medicine at Cornell Medical College, Wild Cornell Medical College, and I'm also Physician-in-Chief uh, at the New York Presbyterian Hospital, uh, Wild Cornell. Well, I think textbooks in general of this type um, provide a balanced um, understanding of both the art and science of medicine and, and, and of, of, uh, of different diseases. Um, and uh, it's, it's sort of a unique medium in terms of uh, providing that kind of balance. Uh, there's a tendency in, in medicine, as in other fields I suspect, to want to be more involved in the art, art of that field or the science of that field and um, there are very few media that can actually provide the, the appropriate balance that one needs to become a, a really exceptional physician. Um, in terms of how, how CECIL has changed, I, I actually went back to my CECIL's in medical school, and I can't remember which edition that was. I didn't actually weigh the, um, the, the, um, the books, but I, I suspect that the current uh, edition is at least three or four times the weight of the, of the, of the edition that, that I used. Uh, it'd be interesting to go back to the first, or first edition, and, and I haven't done that. Um, it, has, it has greatly changed, and obviously the, the biggest change, and the one that has to be um, really kept in mind is the, is the need to be electronically um, uh, um, um, accessible to be really competitive for the attention of, of trainees and busy clinicians who today are actually uh, finding it more and more difficult to read extensively about the patients that they see. Um, and so the, 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 the challenge, which so far Cecil has met beautifully, um, is to be able to keep up with the, the new generation of, of people who are going to be learning medicine. I think one of the things that, that is uh, really distinctive about CECIL is the, is the updates. Um, uh, Lee Goldman and I actually personally attend to that um, on a regular basis. We do it almost on a weekly basis. Um, every month I submit, and he does as well, um, our updates. Um, and we, we, we both um, access dozens of first-line journals to ensure that the most recent clinical trials that are changing or will change or are likely to change um, standards of, of uh, diagnosis and treatment are going to be included. So we do use our judgment. It's not an indiscriminate process where we just dump every piece of information that we get in, in the most recent journals. We, we have to use our judgment about what, what we think is the most important. Um, but we spend many hours per month, each of us, um, um, reading um, articles in current issues of journals that we would never otherwise read because they're not in our specialties. And so I think it's, it's, um, uh, it is extremely current. I think it's important for the readership to uh, really realize and understand how, how, how well and comprehensively and thoughtfully, I think, I hope, um, it is being updated on a regular basis. The idea of doing the updates, I think, came about in one of the previous editions, um, and initially it was felt to be important to be competitive with with journals and review articles, which uh, inevitably would be more recent and more up to date than a, a textbook that had been written, as you, you know, th three years earlier. Um, so it was by necessity, probably, and uh, I think it's transformed from being a necessity to a tremendous challenge for us uh, to be the best at updating um, and to be the most current in updating, but not just the most current, but the most thoughtful about ba balancing what's important and what isn't important. 